Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Hello. A little bit different to see you uh, in the evening. We normally see you during lunchtime, but as we've got um, Rebecca joining us, uh, who's in Paris, um, we've we've lined it up to um, have more of an evening session if you're in Australia. So a very warm welcome um, to you all. Thank you for joining us um, today. My name is Alison Bird. I'm a program manager here at Climate Salad and really um, fantastic to have you here today. Uh, I'd like to invite you to turn on your um, camera if you'd like to. We don't mind if you're getting dinner ready. Um, we'd, uh, we'd love to see your, your, your face. And to begin, I'd just like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're all meeting today, which, which will be different for all of us. For me, that's the Minjungul people of the Bundjalung Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to Elders past and present and extend that respect to any other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. If you haven't already, um, please share in the chat your name, your business, and where you're tuning in from. We'd also love to know um, whether you're already uh, expanding over to the EU or the UK, um, or whether you're starting to think about it. If you're able to put that in the chat as well, that would be great. Today's session is about unlocking investment and growth in the EU and UK with Rebecca Ravini. Rebecca is an investment analyst at Techstars Paris. And on behalf of the climate salad community, we're delighted to welcome you here, Rebecca, for this session. There will okay. be some opportunities to ask questions, uh, but do pop uh, any that you have in the chat as we go and we'll make sure that these um, get answered. And welcome, Rebecca. I will uh, pass it over to you. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much, Alison. Uh, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, just for you to know, so it's now in Paris um, and uh, and it's, it's, it's morning time. So for me, it's the start of the day. Thanks for connecting, even though it's uh, almost the end for you. Um, okay. So... I will, uh, uh, I think you should be able to see my screen as Alison said, uh, so I will, amazing. So I will uh, um, now start um, talking with like, a few words about me. Um, I'm Rebecca, investment analyst and program manager at TechSource Sustainability Paris. Um, before I joined TechSource um, three years ago, um, indeed in the Paris hub, uh, which is where the investment is, is, is specifically focused on um, sustainability and impact more climate tech related um, but before that um, I have experience in supporting companies um, ex like expanding at the international level uh, indeed before I used to work for uh, the uh, Italian government helping Italian companies expand in France so I've been kind of developing a bit of understanding of um, it's the case of Italy and France, but uh, the uh, characteristic of the two innovation ecosystems and uh, um, more broadly um, European ones. So I'm glad to be with you today and I will try to answer your questions. Um, if, uh, if then these are very specific, we can have a separate one-on-one -on -one discussion to see how we can help. Um, the, the agenda of today, I guess Alison has... Uh, um, already shared with you. Um, we're go I'm going to go through a quick presentation of uh, uh, the company I'm working with since it's pretty has a pretty international footprint um, and uh, we'll then uh, go uh, more in depth into the um, climate market trends, especially my willingness is to show you um, how the, um, because also of the numbers, how climate tech um, is growing and is becoming a um, like a crucial sector when it comes to um, to funding uh, deals, but also uh, funds that are raised uh, by investors. Um, then I will try to touch base a bit, which are the main um, regulations in Europe when it comes to um, to sustainability, when it comes to climate, to show you um, that there is a readiness of the market. Um, to uh, all and this uh, very push is also given by at the governmental level, um, and then I will uh, um, focus more. Could be interesting for you this part. I, I um, on which are the kind of ways uh, to get fundings in you, um, apart from traditional VC investors also um, to also non dilutive fundings. Uh, then uh, here we can start. I would say um, so. Um, about uh, Texers. So I do work for Texers. Texers is uh, an operating uh, investor. So we have, it's a, we are a fund 
uh, that is uh, based in the US, but, um, and we are a fund and accelerator. So what we, our deal is to invest in early stage companies uh, and then put in place a three months accelerator program um, that helps companies indeed consolidating their business and expanding um, at international scale. Uh, here a bit of the numbers uh, of, um, of our company. So we are currently uh, present in 17 countries um, and we are running over 50 accelerator programs worldwide. Um, we rely a lot on the community of mentors. Uh, indeed, we have over 4,000 4, mentors um, in our community and on our founders that are located all over the world. So this peer-to-peer -peer support helps in internationalizing their business. I uh, work for the uh, Texas Sustainability uh, Paris Hub. Um, actually, because of the reason that we'll discuss later, um, uh, the Texers in 2022, so last year, decided to move the sustainability hub of Texers from the US to Europe. And uh, before, indeed, in the US, we had a partnership with the Nature Conservancy Institute. Um, then this partnership was over. And in the moment in which the decision at central level was to be taken, where to locate the sustainability hub because of the readiness of the market, because of the numbers of, because of the regulation and the numbers of funds that were created. Um, then the decision was to put it in Paris. And um, indeed, so since uh, um, two years, so beginning of 2022, our mandate at Tax for Sustainability Paris is to uh, source and invest in 24 companies on a yearly basis um, in the uh, sustainability impact, more climate-oriented space. Uh, this up to now, we have a, a portfolio of 48 um, companies, still not Australia ones, um, and whose business um, is uh, are really in the very subsectors of the um, of the sustainability and climate space, whether it can be uh, energy, um, uh, energy uh, mobility, green fintech, um, and um, and yes. So what uh, uh, what we say indeed, uh, also in terms of technology, uh, we are pretty sector agnostic. Um, therefore, we we strongly believe. Uh, indeed, that climate change cannot be solved by software alone. So investment at early stage level has to be made also for uh, more hardware companies. Later, um, I will also look at the chat to understand what your businesses are about. Um, so to understand indeed if some of you also are running hardware, um, developing hardware companies. Um, cool. Just for you to know, um, at the moment also, we, um, we run two accelerator programs a year. Uh, one in uh, we are it's one we are in program at the moment until the end of this until the end of November. But we are also looking for twelve new investment to do in March. So would be eager to understand and tell you more if, if it's the case later. Um, if this was about textures and so to give me uh, to give you a bit of understanding why I'm here talking to you, um, when it comes to the um, to the uh, due to strengths uh, that led to the lead to this decision of uh, moving the uh, sustainability hub, but um, that led to um, the creation of this ecosystem around climate tech in Europe. Um, here, um, some of the um, of the of the points that I found like interesting for you to notice. Uh, these were taken from also uh, sharing a report from uh, from Deal Room, um, and uh, first of all. Um, we were seeing because of the uh, um, the the numbers um, that climate tech is the uh, fastest growing vertical in Europe, um, just after fintech, um, and indeed the uh, startup ecosystem is uh, now worth over hundred billion um, when compared since twenty twenty. So we are seeing a, a rise um, in in this sense. Uh, we are also seeing. Uh, that indeed the um, the interest comes also from LPs uh, that for sure are um, also like pushed by regulation. Um, but in, when we look at the um, kind of funds that are um, that are uh, raised, um, there is a more and more funds which are um, climate tech vertical uh, focus, but also um, more and more um, generalistic VCs. Uh, that are interested into climate. Um, and then um, climate tech, com climate deep tech companies also um, 
like as we were saying, these are crucial for the proper enabling enablement of uh, um of uh, uh, climate change. Indeed, if you if our very mission is uh, um to cool this planet, um the uh, hard um deep tech companies are uh, are crucially important. But we are seeing that uh, at that level more early um stage fundings um are are done in Europe. So this is to give you like some uh, some insights. Um, then the here is a, to give you a bit of an overview. The European climate ecosystem worth over hundred billion, um, and we are seeing it really a huge. Um, uh, it it's really like the last two years um, have been have been crucial. Um, I've been seeing also the uh, the raising of this ecosystem in Paris. Um, the more and more interest that is um, that is developing among investors and a willingness from investor side uh, to get to know more, to get to develop a better understanding um, in this space. Um, in 2021, uh, indeed, 30% of all the European funding went to um, climate tech startups. So this is um, an, um, an important number that I felt that it was uh, to, be, uh, to be remarked. And um, and here, as we were saying, climate tech need is a, a fast is a is a very fast growing uh, investment vertical. Just for you to know, um, this is a sifted um, sifted report that was published um, last uh, last week. It was showing that in uh, September twenty twenty three, so this year, uh, we noticed the um, more funding than uh, than ever in uh, climate tech, actually in Europe. Uh, not due to the amount of deals per se, but um, 4.4 billion were invested um, were invested in it. like actually three main la main, main rounds uh, led this number. Uh, one is was in a low carbon steel manufacturer company uh, called H2 uh, Green Steel. Um, one for uh, was a for charging provider, and another one was a for a French uh, gigafactory. So. Um, a lot in the energy energy space, um, but this is to to tell you what's the what we are seeing at the moment. Um, if this is about Europe, um, like UK indeed um, shows uh, a, a very mature ecosystem as well. Um, in terms of um, of fundings, indeed, um, the we saw a peak in. The, this, uh, these are the, with the latest numbers, these are about like last year, 2022. Uh, the Q1 of 2022 showed the um, high num highest numbers when it comes to the uh, fundings, when it comes to deal, uh, then showing a bit of drop. Uh, but yes, um, we are at Texas, we, for example, we have, um, I was telling to Alison before, we have a hub, um, we have a Texas London um, um have, which is not like specifically focused on climate, but they're also uh, looking at the, um, so they're pretty sector agnostic. And, um, and yes, very often when, um, ah, actually, uh, we are hosting an event, a climate pitch event in London, um, together with the London team uh, in um, at the end of the month. So if some of you are around, it would be a pleasure to me to invite you. Um, but yes, we are going there because obviously uh, we see that um, the, uh, the market is mature. If this was uh, about more or less what we see as uh, the um, some trends, um, what uh, for sure is also uh, being pushed, and uh, as any innovation ecosystem, um, is the uh, regulatory in regulatory environment. Uh, before entering into the um, into this, I wanted to tell you that um, for those of you who are not French, I'm not French either. But what I've been doing is studying a bit this ecosystem, um, the ecosystem of the, what is called the French tech. Uh, so in France, actually France up to um, seven years ago was like Italy and Europe, a bit laggard when it comes to regulations, when it comes to uh, innovation. And then um, it has been a, a strong governmental push led by Macron, the president of France, to make, uh, to de develop this, uh, this vision of uh, being France being a startup nation uh, and therefore putting, injecting lots of money, especially for early stage entrepreneurship that actually revamped the uh, entrepreneurial um, ecosystem in France, making France today um, just after, like just after or um, 
in Germany the um, the biggest uh, innovation innovation hub. And uh, this can be seen indeed in terms of the amounts of funds that are um, created, but also um, the all the the policies that are uh, that allow um, entrepreneurs to quit their jobs and then uh, being helped uh, from economic point of view by the state to like run and uh, launch their companies. So if this is uh, um, about France specifically, um, when it comes to climate, especially when it comes to Europe, uh, European Union. Um, the um, the vision of and the objective of, of Europe being climate neutral by 2050 uh, develop um, led this uh, um, develop this is uh, uh, the European Green Deal uh, initiative. Actually, European Green Deal initiative. When you hear your, this name, you have already uh, is this all this set of policies that have uh, been put in place uh, by. Um, Yes, European government first, but then will be implemented in any European countries that actually touch different sectors. Um, here I've been mostly discussing about sustainable finance, uh, but these are um, in a, um, and really like any any sector um, when it comes to uh, mobility, energy. Um, so the to make indeed to be uh, climate neutral um, by twenty fifty. So one of them is the European taxonomy, and actually is um, a sort of a classification criteria uh, to determine whether the um, economic activity um, or the, in the case of the economic or the um, economic investment uh, was um, to accelerate or not the green transition. Um, indeed, it has been in the uh, framework of the four of the um, European taxonomy that um, this is a this has also been developed as a tool for companies and for investors to um, make sustainable investment decision and understand what does it mean sustainable because it, before there was not this um, this clarity uh, among around the word sustainable and um, what was indeed um, uh, like sustainable project um, so I, in this sense, uh, any key regulations uh, is the uh, SFDR, which is the Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation, uh, that indeed is a, a regulation that has been designed for uh, financial market participants, financial advisors within the European Union, like investment manager, asset managers, um, that um, offer pro product in the European market. And actually, this um, regulation um, has a mandate to late two types of level of disclosure. At the organizational level reporting, institutions indeed need to disclose the, the ESG risks that are associated, are associated with the investment processes uh, and how they have integrated ESG factors into the, um, for example, remuneration policies. And then, uh, and this is very, very important, like especially for investors, and it's very often heard the, um, the fund product level reporting. Um, because the SFDR categorizes also product into three distinct categories, each having its disclosure rules. So as seen here, we have Article 6 that refers to funds that do not integrate sustainability factors in the investment process. Um, actually, however, these funds must disclose how sustainability risks are integrated into the product investment decisions or um, and sorry, assess the likely uh, impact of sustainability uh, risk on the returns on the financial products. So the Article 6 in this is not the uh, one which is uh, the most uh, um, like uh, sustainability um, oriented. What is interesting is Article 8 and Article 9. Article 8 need to refer to the fund that promotes and integrate ESG in the investment process. Uh, and then Article 9 is really for those funds uh, that have sustainability investment as the primary objective. So um, these funds must disclose the uh, EEG fund objective, prove how, prove how the index is aligned with this objective and the EU taxonomy, the one that we cited before, and explain how and why uh, the, uh, the index that they define may differ from the broad market index. So lots of, uh, um, many, since many funds have also are created and many decide to um, be Article 9 funds, um, there is a, a need, um, uh, a need to, to develop a better understanding of what is sustainability and what is not, and 
um, and disease. So uh, last about regulations, uh, because otherwise it is, uh, we enter too much in details. Um, if uh, indeed uh, SFDR is really to help investors to meet the um, any sustainable investment objective uh, they might have been taken during investment decisions. Um, at the same time, also on companies, they need to um, the to report and uh, um, in term, and improve the environmental and social measures is uh, is key. Uh, two main regulation in this sense: the corporate sustainability reporting directive um, and. Uh, the uh, non-financial reporting directive. So the two actually are pretty complementary and will require indeed to this double materiality. So uh, to disclose not only the um, financial um, of the of the companies, but also the um, to, to 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 report on the environmental and social impact um, activities that they are leading. So this is to show you um, like the 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 fact that these. Uh, um need are European policies but uh, be, are to be implemented in any European countries and before uh there is there are more and more companies and uh, early stage ventures that are adapting to it if this was about uh, regulations and uh, I hope to not have uh, have lost you um since it's also 5 p.m for you um I um will now um talk about the policy levers indeed leading to um, ecosystem growth and the fact that as you as you know uh, all very often there is a need um, if now up to now we have been talking about the um, traditional investment form so venture venture capital um, you know better than I do that sometimes there are limitation linked to it limitation linked to um, to the uh, Type of fund scope, um, so there are uh, those funds indeed um, uh, that uh, favor I don't know specific sector uh, technologies or business model at a specific time, uh, or limitation linked to the uh, geography. Um, the fact that some uh, we have seen like investors or we see that indeed are, are not covering the specific geography of the company in question, even though the, the thesis would be aligned, or because of the fundraising environment, which is uh, which have been we have seeing and we have been seeing a bit more difficulty in, in recent times or last because of the fund life cycle so uh, potentially the um in the moment in which the um the the, the fund there are no um is not possible to to for, to to assure the investment because no follow up for example would be um would be possible so for all these reasons actually what we are also telling our companies every day is that um other ways of fundings have to be uh, we have to have to be looked at, and um, these are uh, among the ones. Um, I've been looking a bit about the uh, also non dilutive um, grant non dilutive kind of fundings that can be um, that are present in European Union, which are which are uh, in the UK, and these are um, to be to be remarked. Whether it's about the uh, grants, whether it's about competition awards, uh, we often look at about innovation loans and uh, um, tax credits and visas. I will later in the um, in like my last slide uh, be telling you about the um, the visas, especially like in because these are uh, I feel for the sake of today's presentation also one of the most interesting ones to to look at. Uh, but yes, indeed. There are many. Um, what I have um, been doing also in the presentation that I would like to share with you um, later is to uh, report to you. Here there is a sort of um, um, in a table uh, that gathers all the kind of non-dilutive funding when it comes to um, grants, awards, or um, uh, innovation loans that are present in Europe and in the UK to which uh, that you could look at. So to give you better visibility, because as you know, and as you can imagine any um, like European countries or you, in the UK, they have their very own specific. Um, here, what I can mention to you, um, indeed, is the French tech. Um, French tech uh, is, uh, here there is no, um, there is no the, uh, the Italian one, Italian startup, uh, but French tech is this, uh, um, uh, it's a sort of a 
like governmental branch of the um, European governments that um, indeed help fostering the innovation ecosystem in in France, um, and uh, actually is uh, the um, is an organization that fostered a lot the attraction of international talents in France, uh, and um, through a different organization among which. Um, like investors or accelerators, incubators, um, these allow, and uh, these are entitled to uh, justify to give visas in the to to founders and uh, um, and to and to attract them in uh, to have them working in in France and in this case specifically to to Europe. Um, so um, indeed, in here I've been. Um, looking a bit to how non -U UK companies based companies could leverage um, of it. Um, in France, indeed, we have the French Tech Visa, but we also have this other organization that is called Choose Paris Region, um, that is a very specific of the um, you know, of the Paris region indeed. And um, it's an organization that is supporting um, in it is in light and unlocking many uh, funding opportunities for international companies that establish to incorporate in France, especially in they could decide to incorporate in France. Um, same if uh, the idea is somehow like turning into your head, don't hesitate to reach out so that they can put you in contact with the uh, people like um, of the organizations. Um, then in the UK at the moment it exists this innovator founder visa here as well I've been putting some links so that you can have uh, a look at um, the procedure seems to be um, slightly um, slightly um, more uh, more long but um, at the same time uh, would be a pleasure for me to put you in contact uh, with the colleagues in the um, Texas London team uh, if you're going through it, so to understand how to facilitate the process. Um, in Italy, we have the Italian Startup Visa. Um, Italy, uh, just for you to know, in terms of ecosystem, we are not at the level of France, we're not at the level of Germany at the moment, but we are seeing a rising in like in terms of the impact um, ecosystem. I was discussed, I'm going to Naples actually today um, because uh, to meet with some impact and uh, um, uh, companies in the circular economy space um, because, uh, um, yes, because of the uh, same at level of, uh, of regulation, uh, the regulation are like more and more present, especially uh, more and more um, support is given to, uh, to, to also individuals when it comes to, when it, to individuals. Um, I don't know, example, in the energy and innovation space, um, so more and more companies also um, have been uh, have been created, and so yes, Italy is not as mature as France, but we are seeing a rising ecosystem. So it's uh, that it's I feel really is gonna be booming in the next coming year, two years, and then other two companies, other two countries where I see um, that the ecosystem is flourishing: uh, Germany, Denmark. Um, in in Denmark we don't have a hub at Texas, but in Germany we do, um, and so. Uh, the, it exists this D visa um, and uh, same it would be a pleasure for me to put you in contact with uh, the uh, colleagues there as well so I feel that uh, this was uh, most of the information I wanted to um, share with you uh, knowing that for sure this is not um, this is not exhaustive and uh, when coming to like specifically um, regulation itself and um, and um, and yes all the topics that we could have covered today um, these are there's not, these are many I hope however that you um, that this was insightful for you I don't know if now you um, you have some question or you want to go I don't know uh, discuss a bit about like your business but I would be would be glad to um, yes hear to hear to you and thanks Alison for this opportunity. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, really, really insightful. And um, a question here, and I, I think it's probably one um, that a few people are thinking as well, is uh, just how accessible is it for um, folks who are from outside the EU to, to access investments and the funds if, if they're not actually based in, in Europe? Yeah, sure. 
Um, actually, what we are seeing is that um, we have been uh, looking at several companies that are strongly re relying on these uh, visas uh, that are uh, specifically been created in Europe, UK to attract international uh, entrepreneurs. So um, in this once uh, once this is done um, and the the presence in the in the country is a bit more established and um, I would say in that sense, um, then the, the investment process and the better understanding of the country specifics can start when it comes to business expansion. When it comes to funding and uh, uh, what I would say, because this is something that we are we have been also seeing with companies, I don't know, we have invested in a company in Chile, for example, and uh, um, what investors were looking at, investor that from obviously from any, a point of view of investment is in terms of geography, like Latin America was um was in was in um was possible um we need you need to show that your business however um has someone somehow an impact also in the uh in the in uh, in europe or in the uk i feel that this is something that um also many uh, many investors are seeing because um if an investor in france is uh, investing in a in company like based in chile he he she is expecting also to see um some um, positive spillover effects also in uh, in the country where the fund is located this is a very like general general feeling that i have been noticing uh, working with early stage uh, venturing and uh, when putting in contact and um facilitating the connection in between um european investors and uh, international companies lovely thank so, you yeah, look at the French tech visa, like the visas for business expansion and like discovery of the country. And then, um, and then yes, um, also other thing that I would say, other advice is to rely on them. Um, it can be tax, but it can also be other organization um, that can uh, facilitate the, um, the, 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 the relation, the, the starting of the, the introduction with these investors because of also this plays a role like how are you got introduced to uh, to a fund and if it's someone that is uh, someone some organization that are already in the ecosystem this for sure will make it easier yeah I was just gonna, going to ask just like how important it is to build up those sort of local yeah. partnerships and and networks um, in order to kind of enter the the European market, and you've you've mentioned some of those specific organisations as well. Yes, um, I yes indeed. So these are some, but actually, um, there are like also um, like more and more um, like the community of uh, of entre yes community of I don't know if I I'm part of uh, um, several like climate tech community. In France, where I see that also um, international entrepreneurs um, are supporting each other or so giving each other's uh, advices uh, or making each other like connection introduction. This is like obviously working. Um, but yes, I feel that if you are a comp international company before like already being a bit acquainted with the ecosystem, make it easier. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Um, if anybody else has has a question, feel free to put up your your virtual hand, um, pop it in the chat, or um, we can facilitate you to come off mute so you can ask Rebecca um, directly. If not, I can keep asking. I've got a few more on my list as well, but would love to hear from you also. Um, yes, I feel that also. Um, indeed, uh, I feel that Nick. Uh, and uh, and then it's also so Santiago they mentioned some other countries indeed Austria uh, the option that they have especially for R and D um, indeed my list is not I uh, exhaustive so for sure at any um, like they, like different countries depending on the on the business that you are running there will be um, specific kind of brands uh, in France the R and D like is very strong in the south of France in Grenoble. Uh, we have a, actually a Mexican company that is developing this energy, is working on this um, uh, energy storage system, and they recently um, moved 
the, um, the R&D in Grenoble. And uh, one also of the, com the reasons why uh, they decided to also incorporate the company in France is because of the role of this bank, which is called BPI, uh, which is the public bank for innovation, for you to know. And uh, um, in the moment in which uh, a kind of a support that this bank is doing is that the there is this, like a, a maximum sum that is um, um, allowed, uh, but then that in terms of um, dilutive fundings, and then the bank is uh, doubling the same amount um, with non-dilutive uh, grants given by the bank. So this is a so a very very um, strong incentive that it, it is done, and this is one of the reasons why this company BUSOL decided to move it to. Uh, to France. Um, cool. I see that. Ah, okay. Also, um, Ireland. Uh, Patrick, I don't know if it, that is the question. Uh, I, in terms of Ireland, we do have a colleagues in Texas in Dublin. At the moment, they are very focused, however, not on our same thesis. They are more Web three. Um, um, but um, but yes, I feel that uh, I should put you in contact with them so to uh, better know what are the um, what are the the very opportunities there. Excellent. Thank you. And it sounds like Nick's got some connections in in Greece, which is great. And that's the such a benefit of this community, all these different connections. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a question here, I think, from Jan. Are you able to, to come off mute and ask your question? We haven't got you off mute yet. Oh, there we are. Perfect. Thanks. Sorry, I got cut off for a second as well. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I don't have video because I'm walking along the street. Um, I just wanted to ask if you're able to connect us with um, possible uh, interested companies. Uh, what My ideal company that I'd like to work with is actually an Italian company. But, you know, I don't have any access to them. I try to contact them through their web, you know, portal, but I may as well be just throwing my time away. Um, mm -hmm. We have a great technology, we have everything, but I just don't have that kind of access. And I was wondering if um, if you have contacts and yeah. access. Actually, Jen, can you, could you give more, like, a context or... Um, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so our, our our technology is a hard tech. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's we've got MVP now. Um, it is a machine that runs along a wall, and you put waste in one side, so waste materials in one side, and it compresses it, binds it, and lays it out in place of bricks. And so it takes waste and uses the waste in place of a, a very very high carbon footprint product. And so um, it runs incredibly fast. Uh, in terms of durability, it's much more durable than traditional building mediums. And it costs almost nothing. So there's a lot of appeal in okay. the market. And we, what we, we want to partner with um, Case IH, which is an Italian company based in Milan, but we can't mm -hmm. even get hold of them. We want them to produce it for us. Mm. Um, actually, um... Um, I feel, uh, uh, Jen, um, I, I am like, I have a few connections in the Salanco ecosystem, meaning that I'm going to go to also, uh, Milan next week, uh, to this event where I feel many like innovation, like representative are going to be there. And also in terms of corporates, I don't know if the one that you are specifically talking about will be there, but if, uh, if that's the case, I, case, I would suggest you to like send a message on, um, on LinkedIn to me, so that oh, we I'll, can. I'll, I'll link into you. Okay, perfect. Thank yes, you. and send the name of the of the company you're referring to and some details, so that I can see. If, sure. Uh, I have some direct or indirect uh, network, but congrats for the uh, your for the business you're building. Well, thank very you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll let somebody else ask the question now. But thank you very much, and I will link in yes. with you. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Um, Santiago, it looks like you've got your uh, hand up as well. I do, I do. Hi, how are you? Um, I'll 
Hello. Uh, we we've been through the relocation of the company to to Austria. Uh, ah. this, we did all of this research and uh, exactly on this slide that you have uh, in place. Uh, I would like maybe recom a recommendation that was our experience. Yes. Please, most, please, that would be would be interesting. Most of these institutions they don't uh, talk to you unless you have a company base in Europe okay. already. Uh, I would recommend to go to a, a lower level of um, interaction. Like in Germany, it was amazing Verkinds because it's a, it's a startup community uh, ruled by the government, and their job is only to help startups to move into Germany. The same way mm -hmm. uh, in, in Vienna was the Vienna Business Agency or the Austrian Business Agency. Uh, yeah. In France, the French Tech, yeah, the, the, the lower tier of uh, institutions help faster and better than the higher one like FFK or AWS yeah. or BPI because if you don't have a company based in Europe already, they, they can't actually help you. Uh, mm. So that would be mm. my recommendation. You take away. And okay. embassies, embassies uh, actually are looking for entrepreneurs outside of those countries, of those European countries, to yes. bring into the European countries. So my recommendation would be if you want to contact a company in Italy, go to the embassy, tell them the name of the company, and they will find the, the person for you. That's, yeah. They have a chambers, chamber of commerce person uh, dedicated yeah. Is, is very super true, Santiago, indeed. Like, for example, today I'm going to go to Naples, but it's going to be with the Italian, uh, like, delegation of the Italian, like, uh, trade agency. Uh, so the trade agencies indeed play a role. And this made me think that also, um, the, for the question of before, if it's not true, indeed, my, my network, I will, um, the this organization need help to be more capillary in the, uh, in the ecosystem and indeed can unlock some opportunities. Uh, so yes, and you Santiago. So you, did you go through the like some of these visas before uh, to understand what the countries, or you you directly incorporated the 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 company there in Austria? Oh, we 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 conducted a, like an eight month research on every single country possible that we we could uh, apply for, <laughs> and uh, we we decided that Austria was the best because um, Austria has uh, is is friendly for um, ESOP, which Germany mm. is. Uh, and it's not so hard on the language like Fran France, uh, mm -hmm. because Austria, Austria is uh, purely English. German, yes, yeah. it's, it's a language, but everything is done in English. And in France, no. If you don't mm. speak French, you, you can't uh, do much in France. And Germany is also a little bit difficult. So, And the visa, in, uh, the visa pathway in, in Austria is, is fairly simple. And uh, the, I was telling there that the benefit that they have is that R&D people in Austria, they receive a 30% back in taxes from their wages uh, for five mm -hmm. years. If you are an, a scientist doing R&D in Austria for five years, you have a discount of 30% of your income tax, which is yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's all the tax benefits that the company has already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Indeed, it's very interesting to know. And uh, I will, uh, uh, for sure, keep this uh, keep this in mind. Also, um, for me, it was interesting. Thanks, uh, thanks, Santiago. Thanks for sharing your experience, um, Santiago. Uh, Phoebe, you had a question. Hi, thanks so much. Um, I just have a, a couple of questions, or I'll try to make it one um, about some of the sort of cash incentives available for scale-ups to establish operations in EU countries, particularly around uh, manufacturing um, technologies and, and you know, things like that, um, which is sort of where, where we sit. A little while ago, there was quite a large um, incentive uh, that was basically offering like 50% contribution to manufacturing, establishing manufacturing in the UK, um, in in England. That was a few years back. Um, and I was wondering, I only happened to find out about that one, but I was wondering if there are sort of places or if you think it's the embassies to go and discuss um, mm. sort of relatively significant, not significant um, majorly, but definitely like, relatively large sort of job creation, mm -hmm. um, investment uh -huh. in infrastructure kind of plays yeah. for Europe to basically sh like 
ideally we'd want to be shopping around like where are we going to put this um, and try and get as many sort of incentives and understand mm-hmm. what the incentives could be. Um, I would say that the way this kind of um, agencies, trade agencies, embassies work is that for um, for companies, yours, imagine is uh, um, is uh, the case of you are uh, talking with the um, Italian representatives. I don't know in in France uh, or Italian representative in Italy because you want to discover of the country. What you do is that you explain your business saying that, um, okay, I need this kind of connections and what they provide as a sort of service on their side. Some of them are free, some of them have um, little fees to be to be paid, but completely like um, manageable is um, in the, the initial context in the, um, in, the, in the country. Apart from like enlightening you in terms of information about the type of, of grants, if it's about also for you to understand what are the business opportunities, you can um, directly like uh, getting specific of okay, I would like to do business with the kind this kind of uh, of, uh, of kind of companies. Um, is what is the what are the what are the possibilities? If you think about it, actually, like on their side, this is bringing potential investment is bringing business to their own countries as well. So they have an interest in uh, in helping you too. Um, but yes. I potentially what I would I would say um, is uh, as Santiago was doing before, spending some time making specific research or which could be the top list of like two three countries that could be like a fit uh, because of the um, the 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 maturity of the market and the kind of possibility of grants and especially in the manufacturing industry. Um, and then understanding at that point who are the point of contacts that you should uh, rely on. Um, this would be, uh, and then in that moment, before contacting the trade agencies, um, could be could be a way or the embassies. Um, I feel that this could be the kind of path in discovering the uh, in discovering the the countries. Otherwise, um, there are like Texer, for example, is an accelerator that is taking. We are. We are also investing money, so we are taking some equities. But there are like some organizations that, um, especially for companies, maybe your companies, you don't want to go through GDP funding, or so you want to mainly an organization opening some connections. So uh, also looking at more local incubators or accelerators that, for example, not invest money but just open connections could be could be an option. Thanks so much. No, Thanks, for sure. Uh, I've got my eye on the time, but we've got we've still got time for a few more questions. Um, Nick. Hey everyone. Um, I'm in uh, in Athens at the moment. As of uh, yesterday yeah. I've, uh, or over the weekend, I've arrived and will base, be based here for at least another at least a year or two. Um, ah. With uh, activities now happening with circular with circulist, uh, we're building circulist in Europe for Europe to start with. And I'm really proud mm-hmm. of that. Um, we uh, we should have a chat, Rebecca. I'd love to catch up with you um, at Absolutely. the right time. I'll be in Paris sometime soon as well. Some some observations. I've been operating here for quite a while now, um, and uh, some of the, the the challenge with Europe is that it's a it's a massive labyrinth of clusters that are operating across mm-hmm. the board um, as a, under the federated model. So I've just shared a couple a couple of links to EIT manufacturing as an example around Industry 4.0 yep. and what's going on in market. Um, I think the other perspective here as well in setting up companies and so forth, uh, it, it can be relatively easy if you already have a company in Australia. I'm literally going through the process as we speak right now with lawyers um, to set up, phase one is to set up a branch office of the Australian company here. Um, the, the pros of that, it's, it's really fast. The second, the second part, the, the, the con of that is that it pushes liabilities back out to the company in Australia. Um, so for phase one, as you're getting started, it's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and then in six months' time, we'll probably, in about six to four months' time, we'll probably set up um, proper entities here um, and uh, establish presence part of capital raising activities. Uh, the other aspect to capital raising, from my point of view, is, you know, we're in a very we're in a very deep lull right now. And uh, the reality is, is that, uh, um, you know, it's going to be going like this for at least 2025 to, to early 2026. So any short-term capital raising, we'll quickly run out, run, run out of runway. So, 
there are other revenue there are there are there are, there are other funding models as well here through um, innovation funds and some of the some of the large banks that also need to get organizations to commit to transitioning as well over time and uh, my strong advice is what we're doing is to really focus on company building versus building a startup so happy to share what that means at the right time with everybody um, but I think uh, the most important thing is to try and establish strategic partnerships with existing yeah. players here as part of building your growth um, mm. and uh, versus trying to work in the labyrinth, which is what we're going to try and do. So, but um, I'm based here. I'm supporting Climate Salaf, doing flag, wave, flag waving from mm. here and, uh, and uh, happy to connect with anybody that needs sort of access points into anything as well. So that's Thanks, it. Nick. And, Thanks uh, for, for thank sharing you. your your experience there and, and, and waving the flag for us. Great to know we've got a, a connection over there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Luke, I think this will be our last question. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks for great presentation. I was just wondering if you could say a bit more about seeking funding as a hardware play rather than a software play. We found it challenging yeah. here in Oz. Yes, 100%. I understand you 100%. Um, uh, we had this company um, that is a... Uh, um, that is doing floating solar panel in uh, um, offshore locations, um, so actually in NDC. And this company is run by an international woman, woman, but uh, like they, she incorporated the um, the company in France. And uh, actually, what she spent lots of time and um, in doing, and um, but, but however, that she's seeing that is. Uh, giving back results is um especially at early stage of, of her venture i don't know where you stand in terms of development but was looking at the um like european um innovation fund and especially the um um there is the, the european innovation fund and uh, um the at the european union level there are um, indeed, lots of grants and non-dilutive fundings, especially for hardware companies. Um, so I would, um, I think you should look at the I EIC, um, um, EIC Pathfinder also. These are um, kind of um, like, yes, grants that, however, require time to in terms of applications, but can, um, uh, and then also the process of, um of uh, like it takes a few interviews apart from a very specific uh, application so for example what she what she did was also to uh, get a sort of um uh, of uh, an external firm um helping her also with the application process since it's very specific the way uh, the form and the answer has to be given very detailed uh but actually she um she got it um and uh, um so this helped a lot the the grants especially for harder companies and then once she uh she also went through Texas for example so she get uh, an extra ticket of uh, 120,000 US dollars plus more connections and um once uh after Texas what she uh, has done uh is uh, raising a seed round um and uh, therefore she raised the seed round with uh, an investor that was uh, um uh, like yes a french uh, french investor like the company is incorporated in france uh and then uh Texas as well as our company follow up in the investment so if i have to tell you like what has been the investment story for her has been first to go through uh, non dilutive uh, grants but uh, very specific for hardware company and the european union offers ones uh, but also in France, no, here we have the BPI, this bank that I was telling you about, BPI. Um, and then uh, once it's done, uh, it could be if you need, like uh, going through an accelerator, going through an, an incubator that sometimes also provide this uh, investment. And then at that, at that moment, once she had all, also the KPI and metrics ready, to trigger the seed, uh, seed investment, then she went to proper VCs. And now she she raised a um she raised she she raised one point five million um and um, and yes so she she's down in hiring and uh, uh in continuing the her business well thanks thanks very much thank you yes hundred percent Luke with pleasure.
Thanks, Rebecca. We're we're coming up to the the end of our time um, together. So I just wanted to to check whether it would be possible to share your presentation with us. Yes. Is that okay for me to to share Absolutely. that out with everybody? Amazing. I will uh, I will share with you, Alison, later. Perfect. And um, I know there are a couple of people who are going to be in London at the end of the month. Um, so if yes. you're able to give us information about the the pitch event as well, that would be absolutely. That would be. Great. I would like to tell you like about it for those of the few who made it until the end. Uh, we have this pitch climate pitch event in uh, London at the uh, end of the month. We are going to be also in a Web Summit in Lisbon, uh, which is a, an event also pretty pretty big in Europe. Um, so we are hosting a climate event in there as well. And then on seventh uh, of December, uh, we are hosting an event in in Paris. Um, so I will send all of them to you, Alison, so you can share with the community. Uh, and um, and with the link to the registry in case you are interested. Amazing. Well, I would love to be there for all of them. <laughs> it sounds, <laughs> yeah. it sounds, everything sounds exotic at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much for for joining us, Rebecca, and thanks um, everybody in the the climate salad community. I know that a few people had to jump out being being the evening, but um, it'll be uh, available later on YouTube. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, we yeah, really really appreciate here. it. Thank you for for yeah. sharing your expertise with us and your time. Same, same here, guys, and uh, happy to, to help you um, also in, in the future if there will be, will be a chance. Absolutely. Thanks, Alison. Thanks, Rebecca. Bye. Thanks, everyone.